and welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith, where today we're going to be making altars to your favorite Pathfinder gods. Welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith. In this video, I want to share with you an idea I had for creating a rather large piece of scatter terrain. We play a lot of Pathfinder here at The Gamesmith, and the deities of the Pathfinder campaign world figure quite prominently in many of our adventures. Pathfinder's Inner Sea Gods is an excellent resource for learning all about the gods and the pantheons of Galorian. There is a section on altars in the chapter on magic items that inspired me to create shrines or holy sites for use at my game table. Now rather than creating small shrines or altars described in the inner sea gods, I thought I would make something on a more grand scale. I've been slowly working my way through the pantheon and for this video I'm going to be focusing on Aristil. First we need to choose our basing material. Single corrugated cardboard will work just fine. Chipboard, which is just compressed cardboard, is also a great choice. It's thin, durable, and, but I think it's a little too flexible for this build. Now I came across this round sheet of single corrugated cardboard and I thought it would be perfect. I actually found this inside of a pizza box, so I've ordered a few more pizzas over time in order to get more of them. The actual shape of the cardboard doesn't really matter, but I like this round shape. The second thing we're going to need is foam core in order to actually carve our altar or our shrine from. Now there are many different brands of foam core available from many different retailers. We want to make sure that we're using the ReadyBoard brand. This is widely available in North America from Dollar Tree. The reason I prefer ReadyBoard brand is that the paper on the foam board is very easy to remove. Some brands of foam board use a stronger glue between the foam and the paper exterior which can make removing that paper a nightmare. The paper that I remove from my foam core I actually save for other crafts such as maps and scrolls. Next I want to make sure that my altar isn't bigger than its base so I'll cut the foam board to size. The cut doesn't need to be perfect since we're going to be cutting away the excess later on. Next we need to choose a religious symbol, in this case I'm using Aristil. These Pathfinder holy symbols are available from the Paizo website in their community use package. You need only sign up at the Paizo website in order to get access to it. Now I'll open the picture in Windows Paint which is widely available in a very basic paint program. In the page setup I want to use the landscape view and change my margins in order to make my picture as large as possible. Then I just have to print the picture in black and white or in grayscale. Next I want to make mention of tools you can use in order to work on your foam board. I found these inexpensive polymer clay tools at my local hobby store. They come in a variety of shapes and can be used to create numerous different textures. Likewise I have these double headed polymer clay modeling tools. Now these tools have a great number of sculpting edges and they are awesome for texturing your foam board. However you don't need any fancy tools for this build and you can get by with a simple ballpoint pen. Next we take our printed symbol and fit it over our foam board. We then trace out the shape of our symbol with a pen on our paper in order to create a template or impression on the foam below it. There are a variety of methods to create this template. Each has its own advantages and drawbacks. However, I chose this method because it's the cheapest, the quickest, and generally everybody has access to a computer and a printer. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching this tutorial right now. Now all I'm doing is pressing the pen into the paper with sufficient force to copy the image into the foam board below it. I'm effectively just tracing the shape onto the foam board. And you need not worry about piercing the paper. Next we want to deepen the grooves on our foam board and create a bit of a texture. Oops, it appears I forgot some of the fletching on the arrow. I'll have to fix that. While you're deepening the engravings, be careful that you don't press all the way through to the other side. This entire process significantly weakens the structure of the foam board, but we'll reinforce it later. Next I want to create altar-like features around this holy symbol of Aristil. I'll use this bottle cap in order to press into the foam. I like this bottle cap because it's the same size as the base of a medium-sized creature, a standard 28mm miniature. Now I'm not worried about the spacing being perfectly symmetrical, and I can just eyeball the placement of the circles. I would want this to be a lot more symmetrical if I was doing this for another deity such as Abadar, 
And if you can tell me why, put it in the comment section down below. Next, I want to fill in the negative space around the symbol in order to have a stone or brick-like appearance. Again, I'm not concerned with precision here. In fact, I think a rough appearance will actually help enhance the rustic outdoor look of the build, particularly when it's completed. I've decided to create an oversized cobblestone pattern surrounding the bow and arrow. While you don't need to create a pattern that has any particular rhyme or reason to it, I do suggest that your cobblestones don't match the shape of the symbol. My reasoning here is that if you extend the lines of the symbol outward, the cobblestone pattern that you create could end up camouflaging or disguising the very symbol that you're trying to highlight. I suggest that you let the symbol be the artistic focus of your build and make the cobblestones irregular shapes, appear more weathered, and have their sizes vary across the build. Of course, you may wish to use a different pattern or scheme depending on the symbol that you've chosen as the focus of your altar. Next, we want to deepen and shapen our engravings in the foam board. The tools I showed you earlier are terrific for this step. However, a ballpoint pen will still get the job done. I just want to bevel the edges of the engravings in order to have a more worn, stone-like appearance. Not unlike flagstones on a road or a pathway. All of these tools will work, just some will actually do the job better. If you've ever hung a picture on a wall with just a screwdriver because you didn't have a hammer, you'll know exactly what I mean. The screwdriver isn't the best tool for the project, but it gets the job done. Next, I want to add some texture to the foam board in order to give it a stone-like quality. This is easily accomplished by balling up some tin foil and rolling it over the foam board. Now I'm deliberately trying to avoid the bow and arrow features as much as possible. You might have to tilt the board in order to see the texture you've added and to identify the spots you missed. Next, we want to remove the foam board from the outside of the altar itself. I settled on the single corrugated cardboard circle in order to use that as the base. Because the cardboard isn't very thick, I think I want to provide a bit of a reinforcement against curling or warping. When the water and the glue and the paint evaporates, the cardboard will naturally shrink and curl. By taping the bottom of the base, we'll prevent or at least reduce the severity of that warping. Next, we want to glue our foam altar to the base itself. Some simple PVA glue will bond the two together just fine. Now make sure to evenly spread the glue over the foam, especially at the edges. Normally, I would remove the paper and glue the foam board directly to the cardboard, but we wouldn't be able to see the white glue on the white foam, so I've left the paper on. The bond between the paper and the foam won't hold this together very well, but the PVA will seep through the paper and hold the foam to the base. We then place our shrine on our base where we want it to go and put it between two sheets of cardboard. Then we grab a heavy object and compress everything together for about 24 hours. Next, we want to add some texture to the outside cardboard ring. I'm going to use a hot glue gun in order to reinforce the bond between the foam and the cardboard, but also add some texture to the base. We can just put thick and thin streaks of hot glue on the perimeter in order to create an earthy texture. We could, of course, use other textured materials on the edge. This decorative sand, for example, would create a great texture around our outside edge. We could mix some PVA glue with this decorative sand and spread it around. However, I'd be very concerned about the weight bending the cardboard, even with the tape reinforcing it. I would also be concerned about the amount of glue that I used and it warping the edges of the cardboard. As a result, I think I've made the right choice in just using the hot glue. In addition to the top, we want to cover the edges of our cardboard in order to camouflage the corrugation. Next, we want to reinforce our foam board. I suggest using matte Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. If you don't have any Mod Podge, regular PVA glue will also work. Now I have some 50-50 Mod Podge paint already mixed, and I'll use that in order to base coat our build. The base coat itself is important to reinforce the foam against poking fingers at the game table. For a complete explanation on base coats, please check out my foundations video on the subject. I'll put a link to the video in the top right corner for you. Now I've skipped ahead about 12 hours in order to make sure that the base coat is dry. We need to make sure that all the deep grooves are completely covered and dry as well. The Mod Podge has reinforced the build and the cardboard hasn't warped or misshapen. Next we'll add a dark brown and a tan highlight to our outside ring. For the middle we'll use two tones of grey in order to create a fake stone appearance. 
The painting is straightforward. Make sure you get the pigment down into the deep grooves of the dried hot glue. You may want to add more than one coat of brown, since the black base coat will actually darken it, but that's up to you. Make sure the dark brown is completely dry before going on to the next color. Next we want to add a tan highlight to the brown. We want to use a dry brushing technique to paint the texture, but we don't really want to use as little paint as possible. We want the tan to highlight the ridges that we made with our hot glue. Now I really don't want to overdo this highlight, so I'm going to keep removing the excess tan from the brush. I may have to repeat this step a few times in order to create the highlight that I want. Next I want to use the dark grey with the same brushing techniques in order to capture the surface textures of the foam. I don't want to create an opaque surface, I want the little black recesses to remain visible. I also want to avoid painting the bow and arrow as much as possible. After the dark grey is dried, I want to repeat this process, but with the light grey. Again, avoid complete coverage with the light grey and allow some of the dark grey to show through. Next we'll use a white acrylic paint in order to dry brush a few features onto our altar or shrine. I want to use a brush with a broad toe at the end. We load the brush with very little paint and remove the excess on our napkin. We then choose the features we want to dry brush and lightly drag our brush over the surface texture. It's better to do multiple passes of very light layers rather than risk splotching the paint on our build. Make sure you're dragging your brush across the grain rather than with it so you don't get the paint inside the grooves. I'm choosing to dry brush only these stone circles in order to highlight their presence on the shrine. Next with a small fresh brush we want to paint our bow a golden color. I chose a small brush so I could get paint down into the grooves of the shrine. I chose a gold for this bow, but you should choose your own palette, or perhaps find out what the official colors for this deity are. Once the paint to the bow and arrow is completely dried, I want to add a shine to its surface. To create the shine, I'm just going to use some clear nail polish from the dollar store. It's very important that your foam is completely covered with paint, since your nail polish will actually melt any exposed foam. Next we want to put some plants around the outside edge of our shrine. I have a variety of plants that I found at the dollar store. I'll just pick a few different plant shapes that I think look cool. I'll just put down a glob of hot glue and then press the plastic plants into it one at a time. You might have to hold the plants upright while the glue hardens. After all, the hot glue will likely melt the plants a little bit. I think I'll place a few more clusters of plants around the outside edge and skip ahead. Next, because many of our plants are the same color, I want to put a wash on a few of them. I like this Kalia green shade from Citadel in order to darken up some of the leaves. Now here's an old painter's trick that I'll share with you. Now this is the lid from a spray can of paint. You can see this circle inside the cap. The Citadel bottle will fit snugly just inside that circle. This will prevent any accidental spills while working with the green shade. This lid is from a large bottle of mouthwash and it works just the same. The Citadel bottle alone, however, could easily be accidentally knocked over. I suggest you start at the bottom of the plant you want to paint, so you can steady the plant while you apply the shade or wash to the lower leaves. Next, the final embellishment to our build is to add some green turf to a few locations on our altar. We'll just use some PVA glue on a few choice areas. I'll cover the base of the plants where some of the hot glue is showing through. I'll also add some around the edges of the shrine and in a few locations on top. Then with a spoon I'll add the turf in order to cover the PVA and let the glue dry for at least two hours. After the glue is dried, I'll just remove the excess turf. I can use an old brush in order to remove the excess powder from the plants. Now that everything is dry and cleaned up, we have a table ready altar to Aristil. With the techniques I've shown in this video, you could easily adapt this altar to any engraved image you want. I hope I've shown that you don't need any expensive or specialized tools in order to get great results. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at the Gamesmith, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. You can also check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, and our webpage at thegamesmith.org. For our next video, we're going to share 5 hacks to help you with your scatter terrain. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.